All right, Gorgax, the rogue trader said. With me bringing you along today, it's going to send something of a message. Do you understand my meaning? Gorgax didn't understand what the rogue trader meant, but he nodded anyway. The rogue trader often said things that didn't make much sense, but that never seemed to be a problem, and Gorgax couldn't be bothered to hear the explanation. Umis are always chattering on, he thought to himself. Always wasting time for crumping. Her ladyship will no doubt be alarmed by your presence, the rogue trader continued anyway, which means that the bodyguards will be on edge. But I don't want anything to happen. Do you understand me? No fighting unless they attack you first. Yeah, yeah, Gorgax replied. Gorgax, the rogue trader repeated, stressing the orc's name. No fighting. Gorgax frowned at him. Yeah, he said. Got it. Always wasting time, he thought. The freebooter wandered away, figuring that the rogue trader was done with him for now. He checked his slugger, admiring the sparky whatnots that would bathe each bullet in a constant stream of burning liquid. Gorgax wasn't sure if the Prometheum melted the bullets or not, but he liked watching Umi's dance and shriek as they tried to put themselves out. It was almost as good as charging up close, drawing his chopper and getting stuck in. Better even than that, though was the feeling of his hook ripping flesh. The crude bionic was around four inches thick and sharpened to a razor point, attached to a long metal sleeve that slotted over the stump at Gorgax's elbow. It dragged down on his arm, but when Gorgax was in the mood, he could swing it as easily as his chopper. He sauntered over to the side of the shuttle, his studded peg leg tapping against the grating as the boot on the other foot stomped and stamped. His armor, Huge shoulder pads that shifted with every shrug of his massive arms clanked nice and noisily. His boss pole reflected in the black glass of the viewing port. Gorgax was proud of his boss pole. Between an orc skull and an umi skull, there was an Astartes helmet. The blue faded and scratched. That had been a good fight. Gorgax looked past the reflection and out into the void. The shuttle had just left the ship. The horizon was still filled with the massive shape of the void vessel itself. The orc shrugged, soon losing interest. He paced up and down, irritated by the waiting. Will you make it stop, Clintus? The seneschal complained. Gorgax didn't like the seneschal. He wore stupid clothes that had too many frills and baggy parts, and he was always writing on his data slate with a scratchy quill. Gorgax hated that noise. It made his back twitch. Gorgax, the rogue trader said. Stop pacing, we'll be there soon. Where are we going anyhow? Gorgax asked. The rogue trader brought a gloved hand to his face, massaging his nose with the leather. He was dressed in a dashing scarlet coat, trimmed with gold. One of his eyes was replaced with a whirring bionic that could do useful things like see through walls or find umis that were hiding. A curved power sword hung from a purple sash at his waist, a plasma pistol on the other hip. Gorgax liked the rogue trader a lot more than the seneschal. Still, he talked too much. We're going to her ladyship Griselda's pleasure barge, he replied. To negotiate, that means no fighting, Gorgax. Gorgax nodded sagely. Unless they try it first. The rogue trader smiled. Unless they try it first, he agreed. The shuttle docked into the decks of the pleasure barge and the crew compartment lowered with a hiss of air. Gorgax tapped his peg leg against the ground as the embarkment ramp shuddered open. Don't look like much, the orc said. Where's all the shinies? It's just the docking deck, the seneschal replied. Don't cause a scene. Gorgax shrugged as he swaggered down the ramp and took the whole space in. He considered that it was at least pleasingly large. The docking deck stretched 200 meters from one end to the other. It looked even bigger for its apparent emptiness. Though it could have housed an entire fleet of void vessels, there were only two. The rogue trader's Aquila Lander and another similar looking shuttle 50 or so meters down the way. 
Great, snaking fueling wires lay in dormant coils. Unattended cogitator banks blinked with green light. The wall opposite the shimmering void barriers was a colorless gray, marked only by a huge two in dull red lettering. That one looks a bit shiny, Gorgax observed, pointing towards the other shuttle. The rogue trader's lander was painted in pristine scarlet, the paint reapplied after every voyage. But the other void vessel was decorated to the point of absurdity, seeming to sag beneath the weight of gilded adornments and minuscule lettering. Gorgax frowned, turning to the rogue trader. It's better than yours, boss. Well, the rogue trader replied, a smile in his eyes. I would say it's a little gauche, but there's no accounting for taste. Gorgax watched as terrified looking crewmen approached to refuel the rogue trader's vessel. Beside them, nervous armsmen clutched at their shotguns and stared at the green-skinned giant. He was used to Umi's acting around him like this. He rather liked it. It let him know which ones were the grots, and which ones were the boys that might try to do him in. My lord trader, one of the armsmen said. He seemed in charge. At the very least, he had a shiny medal buttoned to his chest and a nice chunky bionic instead of his right arm. Surely you do not intend to bring the Xenos to her ladyship? Oh, the rogue trader replied, affecting surprise. And why is that? It is a Xenos, my lord trader. Oh, he's sanctioned, the rogue trader said, gesturing to the seneschal to provide the papers. It was a routine that Gorgax had seen before, and he glanced away, uninterested in the dance. He held his hook to the light, enjoying the way it shone off the buzzing gloom of an overhead aluminum strip. But I, uh, surely you do not suggest that my Lord Trader's papers are not in order? The Seneschal asked. I drafted most of them myself. I can assure you of their legality. N no, of course not. Then enough of these delays, the Seneschal said archly. It's becoming tiresome. Do I need to take your name and sign? Oh, be nice, Lewis, the rogue trader said, his tone friendly. I'm sure there's no need for all that. <laughs> no, no need for that, the armsman agreed. My apologies, my lords, please, this way. Gorgak sniffed, following after the rogue trader. He grinned toothily at the other armsmen as they passed. See you later, boys. How is her ladyship today? The rogue trader asked. She is well, my lord. She has just taken confession. Ah, excellent. Gorgax tuned out the pointless conversation as they entered into the ship proper. He started to see why the Umis called this a pleasure barge. Baroque furnishings completed false columns, tastefully lit by elegant candle holders and subtle illumination-boosting aluminum. The walls were either wood paneled or painted to look like it, trimmed with a warm orange wainscoat. Each corridor was vast, but the columns and the decorating gave it a cosy, conspiratorial feel, simultaneously spacious and shadowy, showy and discreet. It wasn't exactly to Gorgax's tastes, but Umi's were a strange lot. Gorgax returned to the conversation, surprised to see that the armsman had been replaced by someone dressed like the Seneschal. He listened with interest when they said something about blood but it turned out they were just wittering on about ancestry or something. And so, her ladyship can trace her bloodline all the way back to Blessed Terror. Very impressive, the rogue trader replied, every bit the spirit of congeniality. And when did this beautiful vessel come into the family? It was commissioned, my lord, in the early 36th millennium. Gorgax went back to ignoring them looking out for trouble. Occasionally, they would pass an armsman or some crew shepherding a group of slight-framed, younger Umis with soft skin and wide eyes. Gorgax recognized slaving when he saw it, but he didn't really care. Don't know what you do with that lot, though, he thought. Gorgax, the rogue trader said, snapping the orc from his reverie. Pay attention, we're here. I must say, Lord Clintus, I find your choice of company provocative. 
Gorgak stood behind the rogue trader, staring down Lady Griselda's arch militant. The freebooter was fairly certain that the bodyguard was Eldari. If it was a Umi, it was remarkably tall. Its face was masked by layers of veils, its slender body wrapped in concealing robes that could be hiding a dozen weapons. Through the veils, Gorgax could just about see its cat-like eyes, staring back at Gorgax with wary contempt. The orc used his hook to pick his teeth. I like to provoke, the rogue trader replied. And I understand that you like to be provoked in return. Lady Griselda smiled. In Gorgax's opinion, she looked ridiculous. Her skin painted bone white, but for a black spot on either cheek, her lips painted black to match. She had no eyebrows, and her hair was a stupid wig of grey curls that added an extra foot of height to her head. She wore a huge, frilly dress, her wrinkling fingers covered in shinies that glittered in the candlelight. She was either an adolescent or an old woman, and Gorgax didn't know enough about Umis to know which. Or care, anyway. I have just taken confession, she said, staring at the orc. Now all that good work has been undone. Does it understand us? Gorgax understands us quite well, the rogue trader answered. Oi! Gorgax grumbled. I'm right here! Stop talking about me like I ain't! Oh, it talks! Lady Griselda exclaimed, seeming delighted. How positively frightful! <laughs> you truly are a rogue, my lord trader. Gorgax frowned in irritation. Not like he's an Umi, he pointed out, poking his hook towards the creature standing behind the lady. The rogue trader and seneschal looked at the bodyguard with renewed interest. Lady Griselda laughed lightly. <laughs> How ridiculous, she said. Samel here is my void-born protector, raised from birth to defend my honor. Her eyes flitted to the rogue trader. Did you teach it gothic yourself? Oh no, the rogue trader said. Gorgax knew it long before I met him. How did it learn? The rogue trader gestured for Gorgax to answer for himself. The orc shrugged. Just figured I knew it, he said. Lady Griselda frowned. I've never been able to get a better explanation than that, the rogue trader laughed. As the rogue trader traded barbs, flirtations, insults with Lady Griselda, Gorgax idly examined the room. It stank of perfume and sweet incense, but the orc could still smell what it was meant to be overpowering. Sweat, sexual excretions, and blood. Scratchy music played from a grainy vox caster. The parlor was designed to feel intimate. Its colors were rich and cloying, the walls standing at a slight angle that formed a taper at the ceiling. There wasn't much room for fighting, but Gorgax figured he'd make do if the moment came. You must try it, Lady Griselda was saying as Gorgax turned back into their conversation. I shall make him available for you this afternoon, should you like. I'm afraid I must decline, the rogue trader said. When it comes to confessions, I am more traditional in my tastes. Lady Griselda smiled sweetly. I had not figured you for a prude, Lord Clintus. I am not, the rogue trader replied. I've just always found it best to separate religion from pleasure. You disapprove of the indulgence, then? Not at all. Each to their own. I really would recommend it, my lord. Father Gaius teaches that only through the indulgence can we experience his forgiveness. I suppose I never much wanted his forgiveness. I have too high an opinion of myself to think it necessary. Lady Griselda laughed. Her high-pitched cackle made Gorgax frown. You deflect, she accused. Not at all. Perhaps we should return to talk of business, the Seneschal suggested. How dull. And yet, the rogue trader said smiling, that is why I am here. You don't mix business with pleasure either then. I find that focusing on business brings pleasure enough, my lady. Oh, I don't think you truly know what pleasure is, Clintus. I may call you Clintus, of course. The rogue trader's smile was fixed. Of course, my lady. 
and you must call me Griselda, of course. Of course. Do so, then. The rogue trader laughed politely. I will feel free to, my lady. Do so now. Perhaps this is a distraction, the seneschal attempted. Gorgax was paying close attention now. We're headed for a scrap, he thought. You should be quiet, Seneschal, when your betters are conversing, Lady Griselda snapped. For a moment her features were twisted in rage, the next moment they were sweet and serene. The shift gave Gorgax the willies. Now, Clintus, I must insist. Let us be on first name terms. The rogue trader paused. He glanced to the Seneschal, who gave an almost imperceptible shake of the head, then to Gorgax, and then back to Lady Griselda. I am not accustomed to my words being dictated by another, he said, his voice suddenly like ice. There were a few seconds of silence before Lady Griselda broke the tension with a laugh. <laughs> I'm just being silly, Clintus. I think I've changed my mind, the rogue trader replied. You can call me my lord or my lord trader as you prefer. The woman's face turned angry. There is no need to be rude, Clintus. I must insist, the rogue trader replied coolly. Lady Griselda sighed. I heard such awful things about rogue traders when I was growing up, she said. So consider how disappointed I am now to find you so stuffy and uptight, my lord, she added. The rogue trader stared at her for a few moments. This was a mistake, he decided. My lord, the seneschal urged, if I may. I know your arguments, Lewis, the rogue trader interrupted. You will say that this could be very lucrative. You will say that it gives us access to larger markets. You will say that Lady Griselda is influential and dangerous, and that I should take a care not to offend her. Perhaps not in front of her, my lord the seneschal muttered, but the rogue trader was not done. But I am influential and dangerous as well, he said, fixing Lady Griselda in a cold stare. And now that I have a better understanding of this market, as you put it, I think I would like to tell Lady Griselda to forget any potential partnership and that she should go to hell. Everyone was silent. Lady Griselda's eyes were wide, her mouth slightly agape unable to believe that someone would insult her to her face. Oh, throne damn it, the rogue trader said bitterly. I've changed my mind. He glanced to Gorgax. Kill her, and her Xenos too. The Eldari moved first. They always moved first, to kids. It seemed to shrug off the robes in one smooth movement, like a snake effortlessly shedding off its skin. Beneath it wore tactical gear, festooned with wickedly curved daggers. Whole patches of skin were bare, revealing a sallow yellow complexion and a painfully skinny frame. It didn't seem to draw its blades, they just appeared in its hands. It moved blindingly fast, cutting across Gorgax's torso a dozen times before the orc even registered pain. The freebooter roared as his blood splattered out of him in a crisscross pattern. He swung his hook at the Eldari's head, but it effortlessly ducked underneath, cut Gorgax another four times to the thigh for good measure, and danced back out of reach. Stay still! Gorgax yelled, reaching for his modified slugger. He unleashed it in a spurt of Prometheum fire, the flames caught on velvet hangings and set one side of the room alight. But it didn't hit the Eldari. It leapt upwards like a cat, somehow managing to fix onto the ceiling. Then it front flipped downwards, landing silently behind Gorgax and slicing him another ten times to his back. The rogue trader was busy with Lady Griselda. He had drawn his plasma pistol, but before he could shoot it point blank into her ladyship's head, a whip of purple psychic energy had flicked from her hand and battered the pistol away. Now he dodged and weaved from the psychic weapon, power cutlass in hand, trying to find his opening. The seneschal, of course, was cowering in the corner. Gorgax dropped his slugger, drawing his chopper and swinging as he span around. The Eldari neatly sidestepped and planted two blades into the orc's chest, backflipping from the freebooter's hook. It had left the knives in Gorgax's chest, 
and it grinned evilly as two more blades appeared in its hands. I hope you survive, it said in heavily accented gothic. You shall make a fine addition to the pits of Komara. Wherever you want to scrap, I'm there! Gorgak shouted back, lunging forwards. He swung his chopper and hook at the same time, hoping to catch the Eldari in a pincer. It leaned back and underneath, rotating at the hip as the back of its head brushed the ground. Stop talking to it and kill it! The rogue trader interjected, barely parrying the cosmic whip. The purple warp stuff wrapped around his weapon, dragging him towards Lady Griselda and almost snatching it from his grip. Come, Glintus, Lady Griselda purred. I shall give you the indulgence myself. Slaneshi filth, the rogue trader spat back. I knew that you were insane from the moment we met. Sanity is just one perspective among many, Lady Griselda returned. Let me show you mine. The Eldari tittered, backflipping so that its feet planted into the wall before pushing off to drive towards Gorgax. The orc howled as it drove a knife into each shoulder and used the blades as a pivot to spin over his boss pole. Gorgax swung around, chopper cutting across the air, but the Eldari had already rolled out of his grip, two more blades in his hands. How many of them you got? Gorgax complained. That depends, the Eldari replied, smiling. Its grin was so wide that it looked like a Rictus death mask. Silhouetted in the flames, it looked like something a weird boy had dreamt up after some bad shrooms. When will my toxins reach your heart? Gorgax grunted, glancing down at his injuries. Black poison coursed from each of the four knives, leaving his muscles feeling slow and sluggish. He frowned, tottering. That ain't fair. I never am, the Eldari agreed, leaping forwards. It danced around Gorgax's clumsy swing of the hook, cutting open his belly in a long, horizontal slash. The orc dropped his chopper as he instinctively brought a huge hand to the gash, holding his entrails inside. He fell, face planting into the floor, diseased blood dribbling from his mouth. No... Don't die, the Eldari insisted, crouching beside the orc. I'm not done playing with you yet. It gently caressed Gorgax's cheek with its blade, observing the dullness in the freebooter's eyes. Alas, it whispered, and then it screamed. <laughs> Gorgax laughed, spitting black bile in the Eldari's face. He had thrust his hook deep into its side, keeping it pinned so he could repeatedly punch it in the face. The Eldari wriggled and shrieked, but a couple of blows shut it up, and the third didn't leave it with much of a face at all. I'm cunning as Mork, me! The freebooter told it. Brutally cunning! Or is it cunningly brutal? He chuckled, <laughs> shaking the Eldari off his hook and sending its ragdoll corpse flying into the flames. He coughed. The smoke was aggravating his nose, and the poison was still slowing him down. Though he had only pretended to die, there was a very real chance that the toxins would actually kill him. Struggling to stay upright, Gorgax reached down for his dropped slugger, blinking as his vision started to mist. He sent a gout of flame and bullets into Lady Griselda, wreathing her stupid frilly dress in fire. Lady Griselda screamed. Her psychic whip disappeared as her skin began to slough off in blackened peels. She was making an awful racket, but then the rogue trader slashed his power sword across her throat, and that was that. Good work, Gorgax, he said. Now let's get the hell out of here! Reckon I'll be dying soon, boss, Gorgax remarked. They ran through the corridors, heading back to the docking decks. Fire klaxon sounded, a trail of bodies lay behind them. The rogue trader's plasma pistol was smoking, his bionic hand scorched after a minor misfire, and his face was covered in soot and sweat. Gorgax huffed and limped alongside, his face pitted with scattershot wounds from a lucky shotgun blast. He stopped to retch toxic spittle on the floor. Nonsense! The rogue trader replied jovially. Just try to stay conscious until we get back to the shuttle. Gorgax nodded and gobbed again. 
Fat lot of good you've been, he said to the Seneschal. A stray Laz pistol shot had grazed the Seneschal's ear, and he had been whimpering about it for the last three corridors. Gorgax was really starting to find it annoying. The Seneschal stared back at him. I, um, I think your guts are falling out, he said quietly. Gorgax glanced down. Yeah, he agreed. I reckon they are. He seized up as the rogue trader plunged an injector into his neck. Oi! Detox, the rogue trader said. You should be honored. I only have the one dose on me. Gorgax groaned as he felt the antitoxins course through his system, flushing out poison through a wave of nausea and stomach cramps. He vomited on the ground, feeling something come out the other end. Oh, sweet emperor, he heard the seneschal say. At least we know it works on Xenos biology, the rogue trader remarked. Gorgax staggered. His vision swam. He wasn't sure how long he had been retching for, but he had made a mess of the nice corridor. The orc chuckled. All better? The rogue trader asked. He was facing the way they'd come, pistol aimed at the corner. Because we really should get going. I don't like your doctoring, Gorgax answered. But let's get going. The rogue trader smiled. Did you have a nice time at least? He asked. Was it a good scrap? Gorgax grinned back as they got back to running. Yeah, boss. A proper crumpin'!